hello everyone welcome to our youtube channel we're super excited to have you in our space so today we are going to be looking at a problem on coordinate geometry one of our cases tutorials question number 11. so the question goes find the equations of the tangents from the origin to the circle x squared plus y squared minus 5x minus 5y plus 10 equals 0. b says show that the circles x squared plus y squared minus 16x minus 12y plus 5 equals 0 and 5x squared plus 5y squared minus 32x minus 24y plus 5 5 equals 0. Touch each other at P and find the coordinate of P. C says find also the common tangent of the two circles passing through P. Alright guys, so let's dive right into the solution. So we have A says the find, find the equations of the tangent from the origin to the circle that. So we want to start by calling that circle C. And then um, now fundamentally every coordinate geometric question you have there are two things you should be able to do very first you need to be able to get the center of the circle and the very second thing you should be able to do is getting the radius of the circle so it doesn't matter how the question is it doesn't matter how it's oriented as long as a coordinate geometric question on circles you need to get those two information very much um so we we, we get the center of the circle here by basically just um so we basically just come over here and then we negate this x coefficient we divide it by two we have this x coordinate of the center and then we negate this y coefficient and then we divide it by two we have this y coordinate of the center then we'll go ahead and we get the radius of the circle which is just square the x coordinate of the center and then you add it to the square of the y coordinate of the center and then you subtract this c term from it and then you have that radius like that so the radius here is half root of 10. then what we want to do is since we want to get the equation of the tangents from the origin to the circle now the tangent is a straight line and generally the equation of a straight line is just y equals to mx plus c since the tangent goes through the origin then this c which is intercepting the y-axis becomes zero so we have y equals to mx and then we can rearrange our equation to have y minus mx equals zero now the next thing we want to do is we want to calculate the distance from the center of this circle all the way to this tangent line on the circumference of the circle and that distance is just basically going to be equal to the radius of the circle so we go ahead and we find a distance from a point all the way to a line by getting the, the x coordinate of the point which is 5 on 2 and putting in the x here where we see x here and then we get the y coordinate of the point and then we put it in the line so we have y is in place of y we put 5 on 2 minus m in place of x we put our own 5 on 2 all that over the square root of the x coefficient here which is negative m squared the y coefficient which is just one you want to square those and then add them and then get the square root that should be equal to the distance from the center of the circle which is this point all the way to this line on the circumference which is just the radius of the circle so we want to cross multiply and then we square both sides and then we have a quadratic equation coming out which we can easily factorize and then we have two values of m which is m equals three or m equals one third so we have two values of two possible equations of the tangent which is y equals to three x or y equals to one third x so we're done with that part of the question we can move over to the next all right guys so let's dive right into the next part of the problem it says i show that the circles that and that touch each other at p and find the coordinates of p so what we really want to do is call this circle and this one name so this is c1 and this guy is c2 and then but this c2 since this x squared and y squared coefficients are equal we can basically just factor out this five here uh, which is basically going to be equal to dividing all two by five since the right hand side is just zero so you have c2 being identifiable to this so what we really want to do in coordinate geometry again guys is that we want to get the centers of each of those circles and their radii so to get the center of c1 for instance you just negate this x coefficient and then you divide it by two you negate this y coefficient you divide it by two so you have this c1 here and then the center of c1 is just this 8 comma 6 and then the radius of c1 is just again you get this guy squared plus this guy squared minus the 75 square root it gives you 5 so we go over to getting the center and the radius of c2 which again you negate this x coefficient divided by 2 which gives you 16 over 5 negate this guy divided by 2 it gives you 12 over 5 then you get this guy squared plus this guy squared minus 15 or that square root gives you 1 so what we really want to do to show that two circles they touch each other fundamentally in the advanced level would be to show that the distance between their centers like this is simply equal to 
the sum of their red eye or the difference of their red eye. Now, there are other complicated ways two circles can touch, which in, in particular cases, uh, those two circles are touching in two different positions. Then what you really want to do there is to verify whether, you know, those two circles are orthogonal to each other, which again, you have tried, you're just proving that the square of the distance between their centers is simply equals to the square of, uh, or the sum of the squares of their red eye. Good. So let's, let's continue with the problem. So we want to get that distance between their centers. So let's call that distance D first. So that distance is, we basically take X2 minus X1 or that squared plus Y2 minus Y1 or that squared square root, which gives us six. So then we have the distance between their centers as six. So this, if I sum these two red eye, R1 plus R2 basically just gives me six. So you realize that R1 plus R2 is equals to D. Therefore the circles C1 and C2 touch each other externally. Now we're done with that part of the problem, which is that we should show that they touch each other. Now we want to get the coordinates of the point P where they touch. Now what we really want to do is demonstrate a small diagram here. So these are our two circles and then there's point P there where they touch. Now what students really want to do to find these coordinates of the points is that they want to equate these two circles and then simplify and then see if they can get an X coordinate coming out and then maybe substituting that X coordinate in one of the equations and then getting the Y coordinate. But in this case, it's not going to be so straightforward, guys. So if you equate these two guys, you're going to have a line of intersection, like a line that describes the intersection of these two circles coming out. Now what you have to do with that line, you have to now um, basically just equate that line, the equation of that line to the line that joins the line segment AB. Really? Why are you equating? Because P lies on the intersection of those two lines. Uh, so you are, when you equate those two lines, the equations for those two lines, you have the X coordinate coming out and the Y coordinate. Substitute that in the, one of the equations of the line, you have the Y coordinate. But we're not going to solve it that way. It's long and boring and tedious. So we're going to do it in a very simple way. We already know R2 here. We already know R1 here. So this is basically um, a line segment AB for which P divides in the ratio 1 is to 5. So we can basically go ahead and say that um, the X coordinate of P here is basically getting that division ratio and multiplying each of the division ratios by, the, by each of the X coordinates of A and B and then dividing all through by the division the sum of the division ratio so we have the division the first one is one we get multiplied that by the first x coordinate here which is eight and then plus the other division ratio which is five and then we multiply that by the second x coordinate which is 16 over five and then we sum that by one plus five we divide that by the sum of those division ratios sorry so that gives us four now we can easily get the y coordinate again of this point p by basically doing the same thing you get the division ratio you multiply by you know the y coordinates this time of the points a and b and then you have three coming out so very straight to the point the coordinate of p is four comma three done with this part of the problem we can move on to the next hope you hope you enjoyed the way i solved it if you want to if you if you don't really understand the way i explained um how you can go about the other ways you can always leave a comment below so that we can help you to maybe show you screenshots of how we've done it in other videos or maybe in other you know slides or displays thank you so much let's move on to the next part of the problem all right guys so the next part of the question says find also the common tangent of the two circles passing through p so um let's look at the diagram over here so this is our p here so we want to come over here and draw a common tangent to those two circles now this common tangent you realize that will be perpendicular to the line segment ab so what you really want to do is that you call okay so yeah so if the gradient of the tangent is empty and then the gradient of the line ab is m so since the two lines are perpendicular the product of that gradient is just negative one so mt which is a gradient of our common tangent is just negative one over m which is a gradient of ab but then we can get the gradient of AB because we know the coordinate of A, which is the center of C2, and then we know the coordinate of B, which is the center of C1, and then we get the gradient there by changing one or changing X. So we get the gradient of MT, which is negative four thirds. So we can therefore use this point on this common tangent, which is P. We already know the coordinate of P from the previous question, four comma three. So we can go ahead and substitute the equation of a straight line y minus y1 equals m into x minus x1 in this case mt because that's the gradient of a common tangent 
So our y1 is the y coordinate of this point P and the x1 is the x coordinate of this point P. We substitute in there, we have this. So we simplify, we have y equals to that. So that is the equation of the common tangent to these two circles. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you liked our video, please just like, comment and subscribe. Help us grow our channel by sharing the link to your friends and you know your networks. That would do us lots of good. Keep being good. Keep loving science. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.